one of the most important papers in the accelerated learning space came out in 2013, this Dunlosky paper, Improving Students' Learning with Effective Learning Techniques, Promising Directions from Cognitive and Educational Psychology. And among other places, this paper was really popularized by, by Ali Abdal in his video on, and he's put out several videos on evidence-based study techniques. So you have the description of the different learning techniques right here. And the key ones to look at are practice testing, distributed practice, and interleaved practice. Okay, they're sort of ranked in order of not effective to effective. Self-explanation is uh, kind of related to the Feynman technique. I'll be doing a separate video on that. Um, so self-testing, practice testing, self-testing or taking practice tests over to be learned material. This is big in the uh, USMLE step one study community. Distributed practice. So taking the test, you know, practicing the SATs, any standardized test, you take practice tests. That's super important. Uh, implementing a schedule of practice that spreads study activities out over time. So not cramming. That's basically what this means. Not Don't cram. Interleaved. Mix different kinds of problems, different kinds of materials within a st single study session. So don't just do everything in one context, one type of thing. Mix it up into different types of media. Some videos, some flashcards, some handwritten notes, uh, some books, some pictures, some diagrams. Really try to mix it up. So that's the first key piece of this paper. The second important piece of this paper is right here, table four on page 45. Utility assessment and ratings of generalizability for each of the learning techniques. So there's some notes here, which is what all these different letters mean. But overall, what we pay attention to is the utility. Okay, so self-explanation, moderate. Interleaved practice, moderate. But what are the two high ones? Practice testing and distributed practice. Practice testing means give yourself a little test. A, a note card is a little test. So it's easy to just think, oh, it's note cards, but it's really a test. There's note-taking techniques where the question is on the first left-hand third of the piece of paper, and the answer is in the right-hand two-thirds of the paper. And you fold the right-hand piece over onto itself so you just see the left-hand side with the questions. And you can see the question, flip, try to answer it, flip it over, see the answer, cover it back up and test yourself. So note cards are not the only way to test yourself, but they're most efficient and they're atomic because you're splitting things up into basically atomic or very small particle units. Um, and then you have some other ones. So summarization, low. Highlighting, low. Keyword mnemonic, low. Imagery use, low. Rereading, low. So... It's actually a bit more complicated than this because these are called learning techniques, but they're kind of put into the context of memorization techniques. And I think these kind of things are useful when they're earlier in the pipeline of distilling things down into what is the stuff that I actually need to memorize. And then when it's memorized, storing it. So if you think about scotch or whiskey and the dis distillation process, vodka, et cetera, any liquor, the distillation process, or in petrochemicals, distilling, separating out the different stuff from the crude to get the different types of oils and lubricants and gas, getting the stuff you want. And then you see those big, huge tanks for the oil and for the gas. And that's where it's stored. So processing it is one thing. Storing it is another thing. I think this paper focuses mostly on the second piece of how do you make sure it stays in your head? And one of the things about school learning is that they kind of tell you what you need to learn. Sure, it's still a bit of a mystery of what's, you know, it's the question is always what's going to be on the test. When you're an independent self-directed learner, 
you don't necessarily know what's going to be on the test. The tests are more ambiguous. It's kind of like, are you going to be successful in business or in your career or not? Are you going to be able to recognize opportunities when they come about or not? Do you have the mental models you need or not? So the process of figuring out like what's important and what isn't, which is what a lot of this stuff is, summarization, highlighting, self-explanation, elaborative interrogation. These are important things, in my opinion, in the earlier stages of the pipeline where you're figuring out what do I need to learn? What do I believe? What do I not believe? This person's perspective versus that person's perspective. At those stages, these are important, but they're not important. They're not useful to continue cycling through these things. They're not very useful. They're not comparatively useful when you're try when you already know kind of this is what I need to know. How do I get it into my brain? How do I pass the test? And then also as, as a long-term lifelong learner, how do you keep it here long-term? And then how do you make it part of your sort of automatic intuitive knowledge that you don't, you don't even really have to even go inside and it, uh, pull it out anymore. It's just there. It's, it's automatic. It's part of how you see the world. It's part of how you automatically unconsciously process information. So there's some stuff in here like, Positive indicates, you know, efficacy with respect to given variable. Negative means the opposite. Qualified means under some conditions but on others. Uh, insu insufficient means there's not enough, you know, data basically to support anything. So, yeah, these are the key pieces of this paper. This is a 55-page paper. So this is a whopper and... I don't know that it's necessarily useful to actually read the whole thing. Um, I would take a look at it and skim it. And if you really want to, you can read it. But it's more just academic evidence that really sort of solidifies the two key things. You need to be spacing things out and you need to be practice testing. And we've known this pretty much going back to Ebbinghaus, going back to Wozniak and Super Memo. People have sort of known this, but seeing the actual academic study and proof of this, that's what makes this paper so important. So uh, that's it for this video. Let me know if there's other papers you think are important. Are there other papers in this line of research that you think have also been influential and are important to add to the canon? Uh, is there anything I missed out that's important in this paper? Uh, let me know down in the comments. And also feel free to email me, contact th me through my website if you want to. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can get updates on this playlist. You can add this whole playlist to your library. Um, there'll be a link to the playlist down in the comments and in the uh, description. And sign up to my email newsletter. And there'll be a link down below this where if you want the link to this article and all the other papers and articles and videos and books that I'm covering in this canon, uh, just click that link and you'll get a spreadsheet of every single one of these things, the title, the author, the link to the resource, the year that it came out, and any little notes, my rating on it, all of that stuff. So that'll be down below in the uh, comments and or the description. So that's it for this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.